Part 4 First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Today, I'm going to talk about the city of Barcelona and its architecture. First, the city. Barcelona is a city of some one and a half million people. It is a port situated on the northeast coast of Spain in the province of Catalonia. The people speak Catalan as their native language, but most are also fluent in Castilian Spanish and some speak English too. The city centre is surrounded by a ring road which encloses a grid with two major roads running diagonally across it. These are the Avenidas Diagonal and Meridiana. Probably the most famous street in Barcelona is La Rambla, which connects the Placa de Catalunya in the town centre to the statue of Columbus on the water's edge. All along the centre of this wide boulevard a stall selling flowers and artistic works. Barcelona was founded by the Carthaginians from modern-day Tunisia in North Africa. It grew under the influence of the Roman Empire, later becoming the capital of Spain. Under strong government, it expanded its trade, exporting cloth to other Mediterranean ports and establishing itself as a financial centre. It went into decline after 1400, and in 1640, it was the centre of the Catalan Revolution against King Philip IV of Spain. Now it is considered by many to be the cultural centre of Spain, and the Olympic Games were held there in 1992. Now to the architecture. Throughout the city, there are many fine buildings, churches, cathedrals, markets and squares, which date back to the 13th century. One very fine square, which can be entered from La Rambla, is the Placa Real, or Royal Square. This was built by Molina in the 19th century. Seven narrow passages lead into a large central area, which is surrounded by two-storey buildings. Most of the ground floor is occupied by restaurants and bars, and it is traditionally a place of music and entertainment. It is impossible to talk about the architecture of Barcelona without mentioning Gaudi, who dominated the scene from the 1880s until his death in 1926. His style was unique, a decorative form of Art Nouveau, the style of the 1920s and 30s in Europe. It was based on organic natural forms, which often seem to defy the qualities of the materials they are made from. I will mention just three of his best-known works today. The first is Guell Palace. This was built for the Count of Guell, one of Gaudi's main supporters. The building features two arched gates, which lead into the stable area. Inside are two circular staircases, one for people and the other for horses. The ground floor is built of brick, but there is also much natural stone used in the construction. The roof is quite fantastic, with brightly coloured sculptures built around the chimneys and ventilation shafts. Another project commissioned by Guell is the park named after him. This was meant to be a garden city with 50 houses, but in fact only two were ever finished. The influence of nature is strong in the cave-like spaces and animal figures, and again, much use has been made of brilliantly coloured surfaces. But the greatest of Gaudi's works is still under construction, and it is not expected to be finished until 2041. He began work on this cathedral, known as La Sagrada Familia, Church of the Holy Family, in 1882, which means that it will have taken 159 years to complete. The finished building will have 18 towers, the highest being 170 metres high. The building will be 95 metres long by 60 metres wide, and it will hold 13,000 people, a truly impressive monument to Gaudi's great genius. And that's all we have time for today. Next week, we'll look at some of Gaudi's smaller projects, and also his furniture designs. 
Please make sure that you complete your assignment on Le Corbusier by this coming Friday. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.